Böyle bir şey yok. Böyle bir şey yok. Böyle bir şey yok. Recognizing the Honorable Minister with Responsibility for Health. Thank you, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I rise to move the second reading of a bill shortly entitled Quarantine Amendment Bill 2020. So doing, Madam Speaker, this bill has a few amendments. Clause 3 of the bill amends Section 4, 1 of the Act to include the insertion of a new subsection C, which gives the governor acting on the advice of cabinet or governor in cabinet the power to make regulations for preventing the spread of an infectious disease by community transmission. Clause 4 of the bill amends Section 4, 2 of the Act the amendment includes insertion of five new subsections, which gives the governor acting in the, on the advice of cabinet the power to make regulations with respect to A, the examination and screening of persons in Manstrat who is, in the opinion of a health officer, is likely to be effect, uh, infected with infectious disease. B, the questions to be answered and information to be supplied by a person in Montserrat who, in the opinion of the health officer, is likely to be infected with infectious disease. C, the surveillance, monitoring, quarantining, or isolation of a person who, in the opinion of the health officer, is likely to be infected with the infectious disease. The isolation and treatment of a person who is infected with an infectious disease and the establishment of quarantine and isolation, isolation facilities. And Clause 5 of the Bill, Madam Speaker, amends Section 7 of the Act by increasing the fine of $960 to $2,000 for the commission of an offense under this Act. Madam Speaker, this law dates back to 1944, and except for a minor change in 2011 of the same section 42. This act has been pretty much on the book, and because we did not have a pandemic, I suppose that's why these other additions were not made. And it seems to me, <coughs> Madam Speaker, that that 960 have been 960, which is a deterrent, has been around from the latest maybe 19. 1956, or by, by, because it wasn't changed in 2011, so it had to be predated to 1956. And hence, $2,000 in this day and age is not that far-fetched. And it's for those people who are put in quarantine, isolated, and decide they're still going to go out into the public in spite that they're told to stay in quarantine. So, Madam Speaker, with that, I want to commend this bill for the second reading to this Honorable House. Recognize the Honorable Minister with responsibility, <coughs> responsibility for finance. Okay. Go okay, go ahead, you go ahead, go ahead, you go ahead. Who is yielding to the Honorable Parliamentary Secretary. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Premier. Thank you. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I rise to second the motion for the second reading of the bill, namely the Munstrad Quarantine Amendment Bill 2020.
Thank you, Parliamentary Secretary. So, honorable members of this House, we have before us a bill that has been moved and has been seconded. And so the floor is now open to receive any contributions that member may wish, members may wish to um, share. Honorable Parliamentary yes. Secretary. Madam Speaker, it is clear that a bill from 1956 in this current climate is one that merits change, and not change for change's sake. But we recognize, Madam Speaker, having gone through the impact of COVID and going through it, we know the consequences that can arise if we do not have regulations to contain and to check persons such as this. Clearly, Madam Speaker, it provides in every, on every occasion in the amendment for the health officer to examine the person and determine whether they are infected with an infectious disease or is likely to be infectious with, a, infected, with an infectious disease. Therefore, Madam Speaker, this is not a willy-nilly piece of legislation, but one that is necessary at this time, particularly when persons are in quarantine, we know that there is great temptations at time, and so it is imperative that we protect the public and others. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I am not one for increasing fees or fines, particularly at this time, but given that in 1956, this was $960, Madam Speaker, in those days, this would have been a serious amount on a conviction. And so I support the increase to $2,000, Madam Speaker, to show the seriousness of what it is to disobey a quarantine. Because in doing that, Madam Speaker, you are opening people to being infected, and in some cases, you can be pronouncing a death sentence upon them. It is of great importance that we protect our people. And so on this occasion, I will support the, the increase and the amendments that we want to make to the Quarantine Bill Act, Madam Speaker. And I recognize you, Honorable Minister of Finance. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My speaker I rise in support of the bill it's a short bill, but it's very significant in that the, the new sections does provide for legality in terms of um, screening persons and, 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 and asking questions that government will not be challenged in terms of infringement on people's rights. So I think this, it is it's appropriate that the legislations are in place to give the authorities the right to do these things, to um, examine persons who they suspect to be infectious and um, persons who um, you might be asking questions who may think that they don't have the, the right to, you don't have the right to ask them. And hence, I, I support the, um, the bill. What bothers me most, Madam Speaker, is that COVID has revealed a number of things. Um, we have never had such a challenge in terms of an infectious disease. We had dengue and we have chicken pox and other things, but we haven't had this challenge. And um, for persons flaunting the, um, the, the legislation, it's critical because you are on your merit um, placed under isolation or self-quarantine, self-isolation. And the only thing on you to keep, to stay at home, to prevent infecting a larger percentage of the population. And when persons determine, they decide that they want to violate those, um, those um, trusts that you have given to them to stay at home, then clearly, Madam Speaker, when they break the law, you have to, you have to deal with them. I, like, like, the, um, like the Honorable Parliament Secretary, I, I'm not one to suggest fees at this time, but I think it's appropriate at this time that persons understand that we are serious, especially with COVID. We cannot take chances and we can't allow people to have their own liberty and, to, to, and to, to destroy the freedom of others and the health of others. So, Madam Speaker, I think um, that the bill is appropriate, time is right for it, and I commend this bill, I support this bill. The Chair is recognizing the Honorable Claude E.S. Hogan. Thank you, Madam Speaker. 
Madam Speaker, I wanted to speak before the Minister of Finance, but I couldn't because uh, obviously it's the government's bill and the government side ought to present its, its case for the bill. And uh, I don't want to be opposition for opposition's sake because there's nothing in here that anybody in their right mind would not be agreeable to amend at this point in time, given the experience with uh, COVID. But Madam Speaker, I did promise, I did promise that uh, I would raise a point on the revised section that deal with the fees, Madam Speaker, that is um, section seven of the Parent Act. And if you look at the Act itself, the Quarantine Act itself, it has been amended through up to 2011. Because we're looking at the revised version of 2013 and uh, it was amended by Act 9 of 2011, which came into force 27 September 2011. 2011 to 2020 is nine years. I'm not sure what that amendment was, but I'm very concerned about what waiting we're using to decide on penalties and fines and whether the one that is there now, $960, is more appropriate or is 2000 more considerate. Madam Speaker, if you look at the Parent Act, in my mind, there is enough deterrent. There is enough deterrent in the in the Act itself. In that, someone guilty of an offence, according to Section Seven One C shall be liable on summary conviction not only to a fine of $960, it says, or to a term of imprisonment of six months. And if that is not enough deterrent, it goes on to say, or to both such fine and imprisonment. And 7.2 says, any person who is guilty of any other offense against this act shall be liable on summary conviction to a fine of $960 or to a term of imprisonment of six months or to both such fine and imprisonment. So in either case, if it's a new regulation made under the Act or the current ones listed under A, B, and C, 7, 1, A, B, and C, there is a vast degree, degree of deterrent by the measures available to the court. So I'm, I'm not sure how we could single out an increase from 960 to 2,000 as being more of a deterrent. It's just another option for the court. And the court has the options of imprisonment as well. But then I'm told that between 1956 and now, 
we might be dealing with inflation. Of course, I agree with that. I would, I, would, I would rather measure the inflation from 2011 anyway. Because up to that point, nobody thought of increasing those penalties. So, you see, it's, it's really common sense. But sometimes it's not so common sense. Because I want to know if, if we have looked at the penal code and if we looked at how they arrive at penalties because you have to provide a better rationale than just to say 960 would have been a lot of money in 1950 or let's say 2011 therefore we can increase it to 2000 pull a, a number out of a hat today because madam speaker I don't want to I don't want to go on the line of this about pressure and revenue raising or anything like that. All I want to suggest is that we follow some kind of rational basis for how we are dealing with these fees and penalties. Because I have learned that these things could have an adverse effect as well. So it's not just about looking at the money, you have to look at why am I doing this? in the context that is put with all of these other penalties, how do we know the fine shouldn't even be going down and the prison sentence going up? Did anybody think of that? Why you want to increase the fine to 2,000? That's, that's going to be the first option. It wasn't explained to me. That is inflation. And, and, and the, the prison sentence don't inflate too? Huh? No, I'm not saying that. Listen, I'm not against. I'm not against the, the act. The act is there for a reason. Um, you don't have to imprison somebody and they and they don't have social distance. If they have their own cell or go in isolation. So are we saying we're giving the court the option to substitute imprisonment for for um? for fine, but it's not drafted that way. Sorry, madam. It's drafted for the court to, to um, yeah, so it's drafted for the court to have the option, but you're saying that by giving, the, giving it a higher um, fine, that the court will automatically, well, the court will automatically go for the fine first. Uh, but it depends on if it's the second penalty, you might end up having to go to prison anyway. I really don't understand why or who costed these increases. It seems a lot of money to me. And I'm not sure it's a greater deterrent because there are other options. You think anybody wants to go to prison? No. But you think, you think they'll prefer to pay the 2000 So it might end up being a revenue raising measure? But anyway, Madam Speaker, sorry for the cross talk here because I'm, I'm really trying to understand. But my, my point is not, my point is not even about the, about the imprisonment because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want anybody to, to go down there and, and have COVID and infect the prisoners. But my, my main point is about the, how we arrive at 2000. And if it's inflation, who calculated the inflationary rate on $960? Because to me, $960 um, is a lot of money in this day and age. And, and, and it's, not going to be, it's not going to be a minister making a monthly salary. It's going to be, it's going to be probably be, oh, you know, who got, you know who got reported the other day? I had to pay James Brown. And I remember. So, and Madam I remember, Speaker, I'm we very have concerned. to remember we can't bring people who are outside of this I, I apologize, circle Madam into Speaker. the into the, the parliament. We can't do that. Yeah. Please try to remember. So, and restrain. But Madam Speaker, you you I'm sorry for the, for the name, but we I'm I'm trying to bring to our attention the kind of people we are talking about that this could be their monthly salary. And and 
Let me go further. Let me go further. Recently, during the current crisis, there was a backlash about um, the number of people who resulted in being arrested for breaking curfew. If you look at your regulations, because that happened to so many people, because the police didn't have an option, there was a subsequent regulation, COVID-19 regulation, which provided at least three other discretionary actions that the police could take. Because we realize that in some instances, people are even confused. So the three additional provisions was that the police could, I think, give them guidance to go home, take them home, or arrest them. But lots of people were originally arrested. On one, on one instance, I think we were up to 46 in the early stages. Once the regulation gave them additional options, we avoided what would have been human impact on a population which is not so guided as the rest of us are. And at that point, the court was charging $450 Dollars, and if there was a repeat offense, some people were charged $800. And now we have an idea who these people are, and we have an idea that some of them are not doing it on purpose. I don't even think some of them actually sometimes know the difference between 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. They just know it's dark. OK? I don't know why you all think I have to agree with whatever is put before me. But I have a job to promote the protection of the people I represent. And they're not office workers. They're not public servants. There are people like me who are absent-minded sometimes. And they can't believe that I would agree to take a full month's salary from a gardener. Not a full month, this will be two months' salary. It's now one month at 960. A gardener going home late, and a lot of this happened. We have to learn from experience. I don't want to call any names, I can't call names, but we have to learn from experience of the people who are prosecuted. That is why they go on, the names go on radio months right. And you can tell that some of these people, quarter to 10 in the morning, coming back from their farm, which they were supposed to be back home by 10 o'clock, some of them got reported. And I'm not saying they shouldn't get reported. What I'm saying, can you imagine if all of these people got caught up in any situation, you're going to charge them nine, not $960 now. You're going to charge them $2,000, which will take them two months to pay. Come on, man. This, this could make sense. I'm comparing the people who are going to be caught in curfew are the same people or the, the same like people who you're going to be asking. And even if they were not the same like people, which you don't know who they're going to be, who is it? Who is it that we are trying to, to deter by charging them $2,000? Because I was in quarantine. I could tell you I was in quarantine, so I can speak for quarantine people. You all were not in quarantine. When I reached reach on the 26th or whatever it was, I was put in quarantine for, for whatever weeks it was. 14, 
they said 14 days isolation and I stayed in isolation 14 days and I stayed in quarantine for up to 32 days right and so I know what it is and I don't think if you're talking about me or people like me who would or, or visitors who come into Montserrat um, that they should go in quarantine and the deterrent if they come out of quarantine is going to be 2000 as a matter of fact if you want to think that broad it might be a deterrent for people to even come to visit Montserrat that if if by mistake they missed the 13 and they thought it was 14 they're gonna to have to pay a fine of 2000 EC dollars before they could depart Montserrat because they were not in the 14 day quarantine this might even be a deterrent for people to visit much less that they have to go into quarantine for 14 days and I'm telling you nobody's gonna to want to go to prison and if they if if they if this is gonna be a deterrent 2000 is more than a deterrent 2000 is like a block like don't bother even come and try to use monster quarantine system now there are people who who have imposed a hundred US dollars and so on when you get into their country just to do the test and even that people are saying hundred US dollars is a is a is a heavy deterrent they're not even bothering to visit certain islands so the people we are targeting here um, let's say they're not monstration but if I know if they were going to be monstration it's not going to be me and you it's not going to be those people making five thousand dollars a month right and I, I don't know sometimes when when you're in a when you're in a team all of the team members have to act like a pack but I want you all to sit as a pack and think about this carefully about what is the implication of increasing from 960 for a quarantine violation to two thousand dollars and the more you the more the more we speak about it the more reasons spring to my mind why this deterrent is extreme in the most very very extreme and I am not forced to agree with you so I put my my points on the table that madam speaker I agree totally for the examination and screening of persons in Montserrat I agree totally for them to have questions put to them I agree for any surveillance monitoring quarantining isolating treatment and the establishment of any quarantine and isolation facility I cannot for the reasons I've given agree wholeheartedly to a pull out of the hat of a 2000 unless somebody can rationalize it for me in the way that I rationalize it against it please rationalize it for it rationalize for it the same way I rationalize against it and convince me that this is going to be in the best interest of monstrations returning home monstrations on monstrat who may be quarantined or our visitors who may be quarantined and tell me if you are happy that the deterrent of 2000 plus exposure to imprisonment for six months or both fine and imprisonment at $960 if that is not sufficient madam speaker I think it is I beg the honorable members of the executive of the government to leave the fine as it stands thank you Recognizing the Minister with Responsibility for Health. Madam Speaker, I will assume that no one else will be speaking, so 
I will try and wrap this up. There is a saying that says, and as politicians, we should remember it, ignorance is no excuse to the law. I would like to point, before I start talking about even the 960, on the offenses in the act, and perhaps it will do well if we read what is before us before we start talking on them. Offenses and penalties. Any person who refuses to answer or knowingly, knowingly gives an untrue answer to any inquiry made under the authority of this act or intentionally withholds any information reasonably required of him by any officer or other person acting under the authority of this act or knowingly furnishes to any such officer or other person any information which is false, and B, refuses or willfully omits to do any act which is required to do by this act, or refuses or willfully omits to carry out any lawful order, instruction, or condition made, given or imposed by any officer other persons acting under the authority of this act. Assaults, resists, willfully obstructs, or intimidates any officer or other person acting under the authority of this act, or offers or give a bribe to any officer or person in connection with this power, powers or duties under this act, or being such officer or person demands, solicits, or takes a bribe in connection with the powers of powers or duties under this act or otherwise obstructs the execution of this act shall be guilty of an offense and shall be liable on summary conviction to a fine of $960 or a term of imprisonment of six months or both such fine and imprisonment. Two, any person who is guilty of any offense against this act shall be liable on summary conviction to a fine of $960 or to a term of imprisonment or six months or both such fine and imprisonment. Madam Speaker, if you have a infectious disease in the world in which we live and you willfully infect somebody you can get as far as the life penalty for it because it is in fact you are trying to commit death murder so if we are saying that two thousand dollars is not serious if somebody is infected and willfully break the quarantine. Quarantine. Break the quarantine because they should be under quarantine for not a curfew. Quarantine, which means they are suspected of being infected of an infectious disease. Two thousand dollars cannot compensate for somebody's life, Madam Speaker. For a member of parliament to take this so lightly to decide that we are looking and we are targeting the poor. No one is targeting the poor or the simple in the country. Point of order, Madam Speaker. Your point of order, honorable member? Madam Speaker. Point to your point of order. You need I'm, to be the point of order to is a point um, of order, standing orders. I can't know the number, Madam Speaker, but the minister is, is making inference of improper motive on the part of the honorable member and I, I, we are talking about a deterrent madam speaker and not about paying for somebody's life that's a separate matter madam speaker i i, 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 I thank you i am tending to disagree with you in terms of improper motives you may say that um i may agree to something that says um something about clarification or being unclear, but I don't know that um, improper motives are being imputed here. I don't agree. 
Madam Speaker, the, Madam Speaker that um, is, the, is the member saying that $2,000 is enough to pay for somebody who get infected intentionally by COVID. How and does that, that impute that is an not, improper motive? Honorable because, Madam member? Speaker, I would, not, I would not think such a thing, and it would be like I'm heartless. We are, uh, we are talking about creating a we deterrent. We are happy to know that you would not think such a thing, but I'm it's, still it's a, not... creating a deterrent <laughs> for, for okay. that not to happen, not, not, right. not to compensate for if it happens. Okay. I commend your valiant effort to um, convert <laughs> um, what I think might have, a point of clarification might have been accepted, but um, I don't think any improper motive is being imputed here. Madam Speaker, I took the time to read what the law says. And whatever is inferred by the law, so be it. I am saying that I find the comment is frivolous for a member of parliament, and I'll stand by that. Madam Speaker, if you say one bad word, you could be charged $250. Just to say a bad word in Monshot, indecent language. $250. And here is it a deterrent which has an and, uh, and or. And 2000 doesn't mean that the magistrate has to charge you 2000 It's up to 2000 Madam Speaker, I may not be as learned as some people. But I can tell you, I understand the English language very well. And I can speak it very well. And therefore, when I, when I decide to explain here, I do not want anyone to misinterpret and misconstrue what I say, because I'm speaking it. Because, Madam Speaker, I heard the inference of, even as far as name calling, to infer that we were targeting some people who are less fortunate in our society. If that person happened to can't understand that he must not come out of the house to cause somebody else's death, the court has the right to deal with them. And it says here, and if you, when you read, you'll see that it clearly said willfully. So obviously, if the person is spoken to in quarantine and they maybe slip out once, as has happened over the past time, if they go out once and you speak to them and they continue willfully, then it applies. Furthermore, I am not going to try to, I'm not going to try to explain how we got to 96, except by inflation. And in fact, it's 1946 that was put in place. At that time, you know what $960 meant in 1946 to now? Huh? In other jurisdictions during this COVID era, some countries has in fact charged $10,000 for curfew, for breaking of curfew, not quarantine. So, Madam Speaker, I am saying that since this, if somebody breaks and they infect and they infect others, because what is one thing to say is all right to cover certain people. If somebody goes and affect and they are sued, that same person is sued now for the infection, I'm sure it will not be $2,000. We are trying here. It's not about the money. It is a deterrent and it has all and all. And if people want to feel that they could break the law, like every other law in the country. Because what we are saying, are we saying there's a law for certain people in Manchester and it doesn't apply to others? Whenever we break the law, none, even in this house, none of us is above the law. So if we break the law, we have to do whatever the law inflicts on us. And that's the way it is. So Madam Speaker, when we listen and we look around the world and see what has happened to people who refuse to take 
warning and keep out their distance. Because dead man no tell no tales. I always saying here that if that is there and people are so conscious, hopefully it will become a deterrent to them. I am not going to try to justify the 962,000 to anyone. Because all the, all the things that we have seen, fines over the years, we have seen increased. There's no justification written out for them except by inflation, based on what year they started. That has been the general principle in raising your fees and fines in this country and under the law. And I'm sure my learned friend understand that very well. And so, Madam Speaker, when 2011, the revision in 2011 only dealt with after the Constitution, when we had to say governor in cabinet rather than in council. That was the amendment 2011. Had nothing, it's written there if you check the law. It is written in the law. It is written in the 960s from 1946. It's all in the law. Read the law. And when things are put before this honorable house, they must be read. Oh, well, I, 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 un, I understand. Madam Speaker, I will have to forgive my learned friend, the member of parliament on the other side. And I'll do, and I'll quote a scripture which says, Understandest what thou readest. <laughs> because obviously he doesn't understand. So I sympathize and I empathize with him, Madam Speaker. And so I rest my case. And I know, Madam Speaker, recommend this bill for the second reading. And so, honorable members, we have before us a motion for the second reading, moved and seconded for the second reading of a bill shortly entitled the Quarantine Amendment Bill of 2020. Members in favor of a second reading, please say aye. aye. Those against, no. The ayes have it, so the bill will be read a second time. Quarantine Amendment Bill 2020. Honorable members, the bill has been read a second time. It is now for us to take the bill into committee stage and consider it in its detail. Clauses 1 to 5. So, honorable members, clauses 1 to 5 is before us. Madam Speaker, yes. Go ahead, on, 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 on clause five. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, so you're recognizing the Honorable Claude Hogan. Yeah, on clause five. I just wanted to draw to the minister's attention that I understood fully the seven one. A, B, and C, minister, if you have it in front of you. I understand fully that the penalty for those is the latter part of 7-1, shall be guilty of. I read that out myself. 
seven one and seven two are not the same. Seven two it says of any other offense. So it's the same.
has passed through the committee stage with no amendments and I therefore recommend it to the third reading in this honourable house. Recognizing the Honorable Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, I rise to second the motion for the third reading of the bill, the Munsrad Quarantine Amendment Bill 2020. Members of this Honorable House, you have before you the bill shortly entitled the Quarantine Amendment Bill of 2020. And my question to you is, to that this bill uh, be read a third time and passed. Members in favor, could you please say aye? Aye. aye. Those against, no? Aye. And since the ayes have it, the bill will now be read a third time. Quarantine Amendment Bill 2020. Members, the bill has been read a third time and is accordingly passed. And we recognize the Honorable Attorney General. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I rise to move a motion for the second reading of the bill shortly entitled Miscellaneous Amendments Provisions COVID-19 Bill 2020. Madam Speaker, we've heard a lot about COVID-19. It has changed the way that we live our lives. It's changed the way that the world operates. In March 2020, in an effort to protect the population, public health orders were passed to control and suppress the transmission of the COVID-19 virus in Montserrat. The efforts put in place include the prohibition of large gatherings, and shelter in place orders which provided for mandatory closures of all public and private sector businesses. As a result of the mandatory closures of government offices, business places, and the requirements for persons to shelter in place, people would not have been able to renew various licenses and permits which may have expired during the period of the closures. In addition, persons would not have been able to submit various documents, forms, and returns that were due to be submitted during the period of these closures. Madam Speaker, the attached bill speaks to or seeks to amend certain sections of various pieces of legislation to provide for an extension of licenses, permits, etc. for extension of um, time frames for compliance with certain statutory provisions and other related matters which have become necessary as a consequence of the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The amendments provide that the time frame for taking certain steps, if it was to take place between the 1st of March and the 30th of June, that the time for compliance is extended to the 31st July 2020 or such other time frame as the relevant authority prescribes by order. Madam Speaker, the, the acts to be amended are the Bills of Sale Act, Cap 15.14, the Companies Act, Cap 11.12, Firearms Act, Cap 10.02, the Insurance Act, Cap 11.20, the Immigration Act, CAP 1301, the Income and Corporation Tax Act, CAP 1701, the Labor Code, CAP 1503, Liquor License Act, CAP, CAP 1013, Micro and Small Business Act, CAP 1505, the Road Traffic Act, CAP 706, Trade License Act, CAP 1502, the Trademarks Act, CAP 1523, Registration of Births and Death Act, CAP 613, Registration of Business Name Act, CAP 1111. Madam Speaker, column two of the schedule sets out the extent of the amendments to those acts. And I will just outline a few. 
For example, the Bills of Sale Act is amended by the insertion of a Section 8A, which provides for the continuing validity of the Bills of Sale and transfers or assignments thereof, which were not registered or whose registration was not renewed in compliance with the Act during the period 1st March 2020 to 30th June 2020. The Bills of Sale Act is also amended by the insertion of Section 9A, which provides for the continuing validity of a Bill of Sale where the Bill of Sale expired but was not renewed during the period 1st March 2020 to 30th June 2020. The amendment further provides that a bill of sale is valid until 31st July 2020 or a later date as the registrar may by order or notice published in the Gazette specify. The Companies Act, Madam Speaker, is amended by the insertion of Section, 50, Section 154A, which gives the registrar of companies the power to set a new date for the submission of documents and forms which were not filed during the period 1st March 2020 to 30 June 2020. Another example of one of the amendments is the Immigration Act, which is amended to provide for the continuing validity of a visitor's permit where the permit expired, expires but is not renewed during the period 1st March to 30 June 2020. Under the Labor Code, there is an amendment to provide for the continuing validity of a work permit where the work permit expired but was not renewed during the period 1st March 2020 to 30th June 2020. The amendment provides, as with some of the others, that the work permit is valid until the 31st of July 2020. Malady, um, Madam Speaker, similar amendments are, are made to the, the acts that I have outlined for, for the House. And Madam Speaker, I would like to commend the bill to the House for its consideration and debate. I recognize you, Honorable Minister of Health. Madam Speaker, I wish to second the motion for the Second reading of the miscellaneous amendment provision COVID-19 Bill 2020. So we have before us, honorable members, a motion for the passage of this bill, motion for the second reading of this bill, sorry. And so we now open the floor to members who may want to contribute something in support or otherwise of the bill. We are TV, 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 we are Stand up. I have to be the straightforward, and I thank the Honorable AG for um, so ably explaining the, the, the purpose of the bill. Um, it's, 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 it's in order, Madam Speaker, having gone through um, COVID, having gone through lockdown, there's no way that um, persons could have met the obligation under, these, under the various acts um, in terms of your like, liquor license and immigration re uh, renewal of um, work permits. So I think it, it, it makes sense, Madam Speaker, for us to extend the period, uh, to give the grace period to persons so that they can come in and pay by the end of July. And I'm sure that um, persons will welcome the, the, this gesture on behalf of the, um, of, of the House. Um, there's really nothing in it to, to speak to because it's a similar amendment to all the bills um, extending the period 
um, that was June March 1st to June 30th to July to July 31st. So persons have from now on till July 31st, 30th, I say, to make the men, make the men to come in and pay their bills if they so desire. Um, for after that, then they will follow the law and they, they, are, they are open for, um, for penalties. So I would, there's nothing to, to um, just want to support the bill and um, move forward. Right, so if, the, if there are to be no further interventions, then I can put the question to the floor that the bill shortly entitled the Miscellaneous Amendments Provision COVID-19 Bill of 2020, that this bill be read a second time. Members in favor, please say aye. aye. Those against, no. And since the ayes have it, the bill can now be read a second time. Miscellaneous Amendments Provision COVID-19 Bill 2020. Hey, honorable members, the bill has been read a second time, so the Assembly can now go into committee and consider the details of the bill.
this? Is it dust? Is it dust? The chair recognizes the Honorable Attorney General. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to report that the bill shortly entitled Miscellaneous Amendment Provisions, COVID-19 Bill 2020, has passed to the committee stage of this House with a few minor amendments, and I would like to move a motion for the third reading of the bill. Honorable members, you have heard the Attorney General, and so the motion before you is that the bill shortly entitled the Miscellaneous Amendments Provision COVID-19 Bill of 2020. Sorry. I'm s ah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, Madam I'm a little Speaker, bit too fast. I the second the motion. I, I understand the time of the day, Madam Speaker. Yes, I take, I take, do I take that as a second? All right. Um, so, honorable members, the motion before us is that the bill shortly entitled the Miscellaneous Amendments Provisions COVID-19 Bill of 2020 be read a third time and passed as it has been amended. Members in favor, please say aye. Those against, no. It seems the eyes have it, so the bill will therefore be read a third time. And then we'll pass it. Ministerial statements, government notices, unofficial notices, questions, other business, Adjournment. We have one item of business to transfer before we go to the adjournment, so um, you can? Okay, so we'll move the adjournment and we'll do the business after, okay. Recognize your Honorable Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, we've had a most interesting morning and I am sure that the rest of the House would agree with me that we have completed the work of the House for today. So I respectfully move that this House be adjourned, sign a die. Madam Speaker, and the, and the Madam Speaker. I recognize you, Honorable Claudia S. Hogan. May I speak on the adjournment? Uh, Madam Speaker, 
uh, the at the last sitting of this honorable house madam speaker and i'm i'm trying to avoid winging it because i prepared some text madam speaker to underline my respect for the optimum conduct of the business of government in this house by myself and all members, Madam Speaker. And I purposefully uh, prepared some text, Madam Speaker, which says, as a sitting member of the Monstrat Legislative Assembly, and having regard to the rules about inferring improper motives and seeking to uphold respect for all people, I wish to register my profound regret about public statements and how they were understood as made by me at the last sitting of this Honorable House and then directed in rebuttal at the Honorable Premier. My intention was not to mock or throw scorn or either at either the speech pattern of, of Mr. John Weeks nor the Honorable Premier Joseph Farrell. The context of my statement was to throw light on public policy to be made to reach the less public policy spirited and less fortunate persons among us. <clears throat> I also referred to some people as poor people. Um, I'm advised that my vocabulary might have failed me at that point. I wish to humbly and sincerely withdraw those words and statements taken in whatever context and beg the House to record my apology to all. Madam Speaker, I will use terms such as less fortunate and such forth as in this. And I, I respect um, people from all walks of life. And I'd just like to repeat, I had no intention to throw scorn, to shout at, or to do anything, to suggest anything about the speech pattern of Mr. John Weeks or the Honorable Premier, and I hope they humbly accept my apology. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, on that note, Madam Speaker, I beg to second the motion for the adjournment of the Honorable House. Thank you, Honorable Member. Before I put the question to the House, I'm just going to say a few words. Um, I would just want in behalf of the, 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 the members of this house to unreservedly accept your words as you have, you know, spoken them to us here this afternoon and we are grateful that you gave that consideration and we look forward to um, a continuing cordial relationship as we move forward with the business of the people of Montreal. Uh, I'd just like to say these few words to yourself and to everybody else inside of this assembly. In 2020, Montreal should stand proud and self-assured Confident in its capacity to fashion its own destiny, we rise or we fall as one people. We must therefore continually fight down the urge to regress into the snarky, petty, partisan speak that clings so very stubbornly to the fabric of, of our political culture. Let us reach deep into our very best selves 
and summon up some wellspring of mutual love and respect that pushes us all to work that much harder and faster to ensure an improved quality of life for all. It is the right thing and it is the smart thing to do. It is critical that we remain aware that our interaction with each other in this forum creates a perception that we must become and remain a fractured society which is constantly at war with itself. I will ever continue to emphasize the need to be aware of our influence on the public as their representatives. We must strive to represent with dignity, with purpose, and with honor. It is Nelson Mandela who cautions us always to remember that what challenges us who define ourselves as state persons is the clarion call to dare to think that we, what we are about is people. The proverbial man and woman in the street, these, the poor, the hungry, the victims of petty tyrants, the objectives of policy demand that we change. I am encouraged to note that we seem to be edging in the right direction. My fervent prayer, my fervent and forever prayer is that we can sustain and arrive at some place where we are actually earnestly and honestly advocating in the interests of the peoples of Montserrat. Thank you, honorable members, for listening to my short intervention. And I will now put the motion to the floor that this, it has been moved and seconded that this honorable house now stand adjourned. Members in favor, could you please say aye? aye. Those against, no. And since the ayes have it, this honorable house therefore stands adjourned.